Hey guys, VBAD here with another V play. So we're going to be taking out the TA183 at tier 9. Uh, this aircraft is a fun and interesting aircraft. It gets four Mark 108 cannons. So it's a lot like the 262 at tier 8 with a gun configuration. However, you get a lot more maneuverability and, I mean, pretty decent roll rate on this thing. It is a funky looking jet. This is one of the aircraft that was competing for the single engine fighter design the Germans were looking for. Good altitude, good airspeed, and 800 damage a second on these guns, which allows you to be able to do some pretty serious work to heavies if you don't get rammed by them. So that was my own fault. We'll see if we can get back into it and maybe make up for that mistake we are going up against a ta-152 as well as an i-260 and we have a j7w1 on our side so hopefully our j7w1 isn't already regretting being on a team with me but we'll see if we can make up for our mistake uh, but him and i both are carrying big old 30 millimeter can quad 30 millimeter cannon setups so this is a this is a fun bird, or at least it has the potential to be. There's a reason I kept it in my inventory. It's actually a pretty decent bomber interceptor, uh, much like the T the Focke Wolf 252, which follows this aircraft. However, that only gets two 30 millimeter cannons, which is a bit debatable on why they would do something like that. So there we go. That aircraft is down. I am going to go up after the bomber. It looks like I'm not going to be alone in this endeavor. There we go. Two sites. Let's see if we can interrupt the other. Ooh, is that a human? I don't know if that's a human, but we got really good climb rates, so we'll make the dive on the IL-10M and see if we can take him out. Because as soon as this timer goes up, he's going to come back and try and get this sector from us. So as you can see, we're pushing 609 miles per hour, although we are going to slam on the brakes to get guns on and take that aircraft out. Like I said, we got a pretty decent climb rate, so we're gonna be heading up. Okay, I do see a ground attacker over there. I also see this light fighter. Couple of good hits. Ooh, looks like we might have burned him out on that one. In a scissor fight, this aircraft definitely has an advantage. There we go. Another one down. It looks like it's the IL-10M again is right here. And he's pretty much done for, I'm not sure what this aircraft is, so we're going to try and avoid. Oh, that looks like it's our guy. That's the human controlled aircraft right there. Managed to get his pilot. Almost rammed our ally there. Where is he going? Ooh, looks like he ate the ground. And... That guy is not long for this world. All right, we just got an IL-40 is coming back yet again. But I also see the bombers. All right, we're going to throw some rounds into the IL-40 here. Another couple of hits. Hey, who are you? Ah, oh, BVP-210. Not the aircraft I want to play with. Let's just kind of blitz past right now. Put him on fire. Might make him an easier target for later.
There we go. That's the human in the 152. We have complete control of the skies. That's an unexpected change. I don't want to let this guy get range on me because that's where he's going to get the advantage. There we go. Let's head over to that site that they just picked up. We got some bombers and heavies over there. And if we can intercept bombers, we can also intercept heavies just as easily. You know, as long as I don't get into a head-on with a heavy aircraft. So we've actually gone with the G-suit on this platform because I do find myself diving on targets in this aircraft quite a bit. And as a result, I end up running into some uh, dangerous situations for running into the ground. And on top of that, I don't really worry as much about accuracy when it comes to 30 millimeter cannons because much like I said in my BF-109Z video, I treat it like a shotgun, and as soon as I kind of get that in my head, I'm not as worried about accuracy as much as I am about getting the volley of fire with a proper lead, because even a couple of rounds from this thing is going to be causing a lot of damage. There he is. Ooh! I, so, we didn't ram each other, I don't believe, but you'll notice that he died about a half second before I died, or a fraction of a second. And that's because the 30 millimeter cannons on that aircraft are very, they're such a heavy hit with one volley of fire that it takes the game like a, a half second to register the total amount of damage that was just caused. So if you go back and watch a lot of my derp cannon videos with like the Yak 9s, the Yak 7s, the I-260, I-215, We'll hit a target and it'll pass us and then it'll blow up behind us. And that's kind of what happened right there is we killed that aircraft, but then we blew up about a half second after his death. And I think that's what was going on there. We managed to take out 10 targets. We caused about 7,000 damage and captured uh, four zones for a total of 340 capture points, 300 of which was while we were on the offensive. Now, we're not specialized yet, but one of the unique things about this platform is we are going to be able to put in a forward-firing weapon modification. I'm probably going to go with gas-operated action here. I may go with bull carrier. I'm still kind of deciding, but I wonder if a faster cooldown and a higher rate of fire might increase the potential of getting rounds to make contact, much like you would see with the volume of fire coming out of something with, like, the HG2 or the HG3 with that higher rate of fire version of the 30 millimeter cannon. I'm most likely going to be going with the lightweight power unit as well. Currently the maneuverability on this platform is a pretty low, like 11.8 second turn time. That's, that's a long time when you're in a fighter aircraft, but in, in an altitude fighter, I think it's workable. It's just when you get into a head to head fight against something like uh, MiG-9 or you're going up against an attacker, you're going to be hard pressed to be able to put distance on that aircraft to engage him on your terms. Uh, because in a straight turn fight, you're not going to be able to get the advantage. But in a boom and zoom, with this amount of firepower, being able to pump out 800 damage per second, I do find that I've had good luck in head-on engagements, you know, minus the TA-152. Now, we're not specialized yet, but I am looking forward to it. And like I said, even though we don't have anything going for accuracy with the exception of a crew skill for marksmen, uh, the aircraft performed fairly well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And this is usually where a lot of people end up stopping their grind on this line because they find that the Focke Wolf 252 is a little bit tough to handle with only 230s. But I think that this plane in and of itself is a nice little keeper aircraft and it definitely surprises people because you don't see them around too much. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.